Hi students, hope everyone is fine and safe. It gives me immense pleasure to welcome you all to my new video. And today's video is about another interesting topic in wireless sensor networks. We're going to see communication in wireless sensor networks, right? So far, we have seen the importance of wireless sensor networks, the applications of wireless sensor networks, right? And we have also seen the challenges of wireless sensor networks, right? And now we're going to see about the communication in wireless sensor networks, right? And when you say about communication, right, the communication can be of two different types in WSN, right? That is, it can be a single hop communication or it can be a multi hop communication. And I'll explain what a single hop communication and what is multi hop communication. And before that, in WSN, in wireless sensor networks, we already seen that. Uh, the communication can take place only through wireless medium, right? And if it is wireless medium, definitely there will be a lot of challenges, right? And you have a lot of problems in wireless communication, right? And predominantly, the wireless standard, that is for wireless transmission, right? A uh, particular standard which is established in 1997, that is IEEE 802.11. You would have studied in computer networks itself, right? IEEE 802.11 is the wireless standard, that is to standardize the wireless communication, correct? And this standard is very important. Why is that we are studying about this in WSN? It's because, right, this, that, is the, that is the final standard for wireless communication. And we have different versions of it, that is IEEE 802.11a, b, g, and all those things, right? And it covers various frequencies frequency ranges, that is IEEE 802B and uh, G works in 2.4 gigahertz and IEEE 802.11A supports, uh, works at 5 gigahertz, right? And this is the predominantly used wireless standard, as I said, IEEE 802.11, right? And which was, which was used early in early wireless sensor networks, but uh, in sensor networks, this particular standard definitely that is not needed. That's because, right, I, IEEE 802.11 standard provides high data rate, right? It provides high data rate, right? And it has huge, it's a, it gives huge bandwidth, right? Which is definitely not needed for WSN, wireless sensor networks. That's because wireless sensor networks, we know that each and every nodes are very tiny nodes, right? And the data rate required required is very low. It is it, it is a low power device, low power network, and low energy consumption network. That is very very important, correct? Right? So as I said, in challenges itself, right, you will not be able to use sophisticated protocols and sophisticated algorithms in WSN. That is the main reason for it is energy consumption, right? The bandwidth required for wireless sensor networks mostly, right, in many application, right, even a dial-up modem can satisfy that particular that particular bandwidth, right. So the bandwidth which is which, which is given by this I to eight not to one one will, will is not needed. It is a huge huge limit, right. So what we can do is this is not needed for WSN. That's because irrespective of all these advantages, right, high data rate huge bandwidth, the, the very important disadvantage is it increases the high energy overhead, right? Because, right, uh, because of huge bandwidth and high data rate, the energy consumption will be very high, right? The energy consumption is the very important challenge in wireless sensor networks. So, practically speaking, we will not be able to implement IEEE 802.11 in WSN, right? So, what can be done, right? A uh, lot of other protocols has emerged for communication in WSN. And very important protocol here is IEEE 802.15.4, which is nothing but, which is used in ZigBee. ZigBee, right? Uh, ZigBee is, uh, is also provides high data rate, high data rate, right? It can support high data rate at low energy, at low energy. That is very, very important. The energy consumed by this particular protocol is at lower energy. And the data rate can support maximum is up to 250 kbps, right? So this particular protocol, ZigBee, you would have, you would have seen a lot of projects, right? Uh, for any particular small range of communications, right? ZigBee is preferred. 
that's because it is a sophisticated protocol that is a very very uh, suitable protocol for embedding applications for wireless sensor networks for monitoring and control applications it is a very suitable protocol because of its low energy consumption right that is very very important right and whenever if it is when we speak about low energy consumption right this this is about standards right and when it comes to communication right we know that you will have something called the sync in sensor network you will have sync and node node is nothing but a different sensors right and sync is nothing but a control element or a control node which gets all the information from from the sensors right and it has to transmit for transmitting the information this sync will play a very vital role right and in that case right the communication is very important that is uh, single hop communication or it can be multi hop communication that is in wsn right it can it can be created for using star topology if it is star topology what is that it, it, it this, all the nodes will be directly connected to the zinc in that case by each by single hop it can able to reach the zinc the central element right and similarly the zinc also reach the node with single hop right if the transmission energy that is if the distance between the uh, central node and the zinc and, and the sensor is very small right then single hop communication is more than enough right but if the distance increases between the zinc and as well as the sensor nodes then definitely we have to go for multi hop communication if in multi hop communication right definitely what topology can be preferred it is mesh topology right so you can see you can understand from this particular diagram this is the zinc element or the base station okay and these are the sensor node right these sensor nodes are directly connected to the zinc this is single hop communication this is single hop communication correct so whatever data that is transmitted right that can be transmitted directly from uh, the sensor to the this particular base station and the base station can send the reach the sensor node in single hop right right so if that is the transmission range is small or if the distance between the sensor node and the central element is small right then we can go for this particular single hop communication right and importantly right where we go for multi hop communication is whenever the range of wireless sensor network is large right if there is if, if it is large the distance between the base station and the sensor is is very large right if the, the, if the distance is more right then we go for multi hop communication right and as i said we use zigbee right zigbee for wireless sensor networks zigbee provides another important application that is another important advantage that because in zigbee you can use routers if you use routers what will happen is we can able to enlarge or you can able to increase the range of the sensor networks right so with that router with number of routers you connect you can able to increase the range of the wireless sensor network if you want to increase the range of the wireless sensor network then definitely what do you need you need multi hop communication so in multi hop communication right one important challenge is here each and every sensor in single hop each and every sensor what it has to do it has to just transmit the data its own data to the base station and it has to receive its own data from the base station that's all but here each and every node has to send its own data then very important it has to communicate with the neighbors right it has to get the information from the neighbors it has to consolidate those information more importantly it will get redundant information if there is any redundant information it has to remove that redundant information all these things has to be done by the sensor node right that is it can be also called as relay node or it can be called as aggregation node right so in multi hop communication right it, it will be reached through multi hop the central element the base station will be reached through multi hop but more importantly each and every node will act not only act as an end device but it has to act as a relay device that is it has to send its own data it has to communicate with the neighbors right it has to aggregate the data very importantly it has to remove the redundant information right so this is very important in wireless sensor networks right so as we progress through different units 
right? You got to understand for each and every application, what is the topology which is used, right? And what is the communication that is preferred in WSL, right? So here, now you understand what is single hop communication and what is multi hop communication. As I said, in single hop communication, star topology is preferred. And in multi hop communication, you have to use mesh topology, right? So today, what we have seen is we have seen about communication in WSN. We have seen about the standards IEEE 802211, right? And I have said about Zigbee standard, right? 15.4. And we have seen what is single hop communication, what is multi hop communication, what is the drawback in multi hop communication, what are the challenges in W hop multi hop communication, right? Thank you, students. Thank you, students. Thank you for watching. Kandipa in the video, Ongal Kalar, Kurombo, useful Subscribe, passionate professor, and keep learning. Thank you very much.